And welcome to the Tuesday, July 31st, 2018 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. They ran into some interesting malware samples that attempt to execute heavily obfuscated DOS commands instead of jumping straight to PowerShell as we typically see these days. These documents will first run commands via command.exe to then generate a PowerShell script from these heavily obfuscated DOS commands. The idea here is certainly to try to evade some antivirus scanners and to make it obviously more difficult for analysts to actually decode the payload. The DA actually had some issues here with sort of some simple static decoding. So what he ended up doing is just do a dynamic analysis on these samples, which worked quite fine. But of course, that's a more risky approach to analyzing malware. And Let's Encrypt had a little bit of an off day today. For a short time, Let's Encrypt.org did not resolve. The outage lasted for about two hours. And according to Let's Encrypt, at least to their status page, the reason for the outage was that the domain was marked as client hold by the registrar. Now, the client hold state is typically set by registrars to respond to abuse issues or to hold the domain after the client failed to pay their bills or to give the client essentially some time to pay up. Not really sure what happened exactly here. The result was that the .org name servers no longer resolved Let's Encrypt .org. Now, the impact was limited. Of course, if you try to issue a new certificate during that outage, then your system wasn't able to resolve Let's Encrypt .org and that certificate issue failed. Now, renewals, of course, is what people usually are most concerned about. You should renew like you know, about a month or so, I think is what Let's Encrypt allows you to do your domain, your certificates. Now, if that fails once, you typically run that script like once a day and well, hopefully tomorrow they'll have a better day and it will work just fine. Where things are a little bit more critical or should be in some ways, is certificate revocation lists and the Let's Encrypt OCSP server, the online certificate status protocol server that's used by browsers to verify if a certificate is valid. Well, um, often criticized, but browsers really don't care if they can't reach these lists or this service. Instead, they will just assume that the certificate is valid. So in this case, that prevented us from a larger denial of service condition. Like I said, right now we have no idea why this happened. Uh, it would be nice for Let's Encrypt to eventually let us know once they figure it out themselves, whether or not this was, for example, an attack where someone social engineered the registrar into marking this particular domain as client hold. And Checkpoint's research team wrote about a larger malvertising campaign they came across it all started with an otherwise not really notable exploit kit campaign that took advantage of compromised WordPress sites. Now, these WordPress sites, it turned out then, were part of a network of about 10,000 compromised sites all running the same vulnerable version of WordPress. And these sites were used to redirect visitors to a malvertising site. Of course, these malicious advertisements only work because there are people buying them and Checkpoint gives us a nice glimpse into how sort of the economy behind these malvertisements work. They found that this particular actor did resell the, the ad space via the Ads Terra network. Now, Ads Terra apparently has legitimate uh, sites as well, as well as these malicious sites. And then there are again resellers that are trying to find advertisers that are willing to buy ads. 
Now, again, these resellers, they have legitimate customers. They also have customers that do try to advertise malware or other not so great things. So what they end up doing actually, according to Checkpoint, is that these malicious ads are specifically being placed on space being offered by this particular attacker. And in addition to just compromising these WordPress sites and redirecting users to the ads, the attacker also uses a browser plugin that changes browser settings, like for example, for the start page in order to increase the number of hits to these advertisements. And yesterday I talked about KeePass and how a site KeePass.fr and .es was used to advertise a malware or adware written version of KeePass. Well, I made a mistake there and thanks for one of your listeners to point it out. Uh, in this particular case, I mentioned that the valid site for KeePass is KeePass.com, which is actually wrong. It's KeePass.com keepass.info. Also, don't forget that keypass is spelled K-E-E, not K-E-Y. So yes, it's not all that easy to find the correct site to download your software from. And of course, this is a nice entry also for our monthly competition. If you find any errors in this podcast, just send me an email or any other comment will work too. Best to send them via the Storm Center website, via our contact form. And uh, well, at the end of the month, which will again be tomorrow, I'll be giving away one Raspberry Pi among all the submissions that I got. But that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.